Hey everyone, welcome back to Cooking with Tass. In this video, I wanted to share a delicious cake recipe with you guys. So I baked this cake on my birthday, so I wanted to pamper myself on my special day and I couldn't think of a better way than baking a cake for myself and I'm glad that it turned out to be a delicious cake. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make butterscotch cake with whipped cream, caramel frosting and praline topping. This cake has turned out to be one of my favorite cakes. For the cake part, I have baked a simple vanilla cake. You can also use sponge cake or butter cake. And for the homemade caramel sauce, I have added brown sugar. So it will make the caramel sauce really intense in color. If you don't have brown sugar, you can also use white sugar. And for making praline, I've used chopped almonds and uh, cashew nuts. It was mixed in uh, melted brown sugar and butter. This is a very easy recipe, so if you have all the ingredients and if you follow the steps, you will be able to make delicious butterscotch cake in your kitchen. So let's get started and let's make this awesome butterscotch cake. Before starting to make the cake batter, let's first preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. First, let's combine all the dry ingredients for making the vanilla cake batter. Into a bowl, I'm going to add one and a half cups all-purpose flour. So I'll be making a nine inch cake and we can half it and we can make two layered cake. 1 and quarter teaspoon baking powder, quarter teaspoon salt. These are the dry ingredients. Give everything a good mix and keep it aside. Next, let's combine all the wet ingredients. I'm using a stand mixer into a bowl adding 1 cup white sugar. You can also use an electric hand mixer to beat the sugar and eggs. Next, going to add 2 large eggs at room temperature. So it's very important the eggs are at room temperature. We are making a vanilla cake so we need to add 2 teaspoon good quality vanilla extract. Beat at medium speed and let the sugar and eggs cream well. So we have to beat this for about 5 minutes. After 5 minutes of beating, the color has turned pale and it has turned creamy and smooth. To the creamed sugar and eggs, let's add the prepared flour, baking powder, salt mixture. So I'm going to add this in 3 additions. So first going to add around half cup of the flour mix. Beat at low speed for just a minute. Next adding one third cup milk. Again beat at low speed for just a minute. Adding second addition of flour mix around half cup. So again beat at low speed for just a minute. This is just to combine the flour with other ingredients. Adding 1 third cup oil. So this is vegetable oil. You can use any kind of light tasting oil. Beat at low speed for a minute. Next let's add the final addition of flour mix. Add all the remaining flour mix to the batter. Beat at low speed for just a minute. Do not over mix the batter. Using a silicon spatula, scrape the sides of the bowl. This is to ensure everything has mixed well. 
beat at low speed for a minute so everything has well incorporated so this is a perfect batter I'll be baking this cake in a 9 inch spring form pan so I have lined the pan with the parchment paper and going to grease the parchment paper and the sides of the pan with the melted butter Pour the cake batter into the greased pan. Using a silicon spatula, transfer the batter that stuck to the bowl into the pan. So if you use a silicon spatula, it will be easy to scrape all the batter out of the bowl. Spread the batter evenly onto the pan and tap the pan so this will help to get rid of any air bubbles. The oven has preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to keep the cake pan into the oven on the middle rack. So close the oven. I'm going to set the time to 30 minutes. Right now I'm peeping through the glass oven window so our cake is turning out good. It's been 30 minutes so I'm going to take the cake pan out of the oven so it's very hot so please wear a mitten so the cake looks good so taking it out of the oven and there you have it guys our simple vanilla cake so next step I'm going to insert a fork into the center if it comes out clean it has baked well as you can see so this has baked perfectly so it took 30 minutes to bake this perfect vanilla cake so keep this aside and let it cool down for a few minutes after the cake has cooled down in the cake pan I'm going to transfer it onto a cake board since I've used a spring form pan I can remove the sides also going to take the base out and the parchment paper Let the cake cool down completely. So before we do the frosting, the cake has to cool down. So do not disturb it. Keep it aside and let it cool down. Next, let's make a simple sugar syrup. So adding half cup water to a saucepan placed over medium heat to the water, adding quarter cup white sugar. So let the sugar dissolve in water and water come to a slight boil. So that's all. We don't have to cook this longer and make into a thick syrup. So as soon as the sugar dissolves in water and the water comes to a boil, we can remove the pan from the heat. And this can be also made ahead of time the previous day. And you can keep this in the refrigerator. So the sugar has dissolved in water and so here is our simple sugar syrup. So keep it aside and let it cool down. Next let's make the caramel sauce. So to a saucepan I'm adding half cup brown sugar. If you don't have brown sugar you can add white sugar. So let the sugar dissolve. So as you can see the brown sugar has started to dissolve so to this I'm going to add quarter cup butter so this is softened butter and mix it well to the dissolved brown sugar let the butter melt completely and keep the heat to low so combine it well Adding half cup cream to the melted butter and brown sugar. So combine everything well and let everything 
dissolve completely so it will take a few minutes and let it turn into a smooth caramel sauce here is our caramel sauce so if there are any undissolved brown sugar you can discard it but keep combining so it will dissolve well don't burn the caramel sauce so this is done remove the pan from the heat and let it cool down completely next let's make the praline so for that i'm adding quarter cup whole almonds into a ziploc bag i'm also going to add quarter cup cashew nuts you can either use almonds or cashew nuts here i'm using both and using a rolling pin gently crush the nuts so it should be bite-sized pieces do not make into very small pieces uh, so this is perfect so keep this aside I have placed a non-stick pan over medium heat adding 3 quarter cup brown sugar so if you don't have brown sugar you can add white sugar uh, so I have placed it over medium heat so let the brown sugar melt so this will take a few minutes if there are any lumps break it and spread it evenly on the pan the sugar is starting to melt so going to add 2 tablespoon unsalted butter so give it a good mix and let the butter melt keep stirring the brown sugar and butter so this has melted well so next going to add the crushed nuts and immediately combine it well and let the brown sugar and butter coat over the nuts so keep stirring remove the pan from the heat and we need to ensure we are not burning the nuts and immediately pour this over parchment paper or if you have a greased plate you can pour over it so I'm using a parchment paper So spread it evenly using a silicon spatula. Here's our praline. So let it cool down and let it set well. As it cools down, it will solidify. So allow it to rest for a few minutes. Next, let's make the whipped cream frosting. So to a stand mixer bowl, I'm going to add Two cups heavy whipping cream and the whipping cream has to be really cold it should not be at room temperature if you use room temperature whipping cream it will not whip well so please use cold whipping cream to the whipping cream I'm going to add three tablespoon prepared caramel sauce use the whisk attachment and let's beat it at high speed for a few minutes till soft peaks are formed so this will happen really fast and we have to beat this at high speed as you can see it's getting whipped and soft peaks are starting to form Here is our whipped caramel cream frosting. So this is done. So as we lift the whisk attachment, it should not fall down. So this is perfect. Keep it aside in the refrigerator. Next, let's break the praline. So here is the cool down and solidified praline, but it's not too hard. So using your clean finger, let's break the praline. So I'm going to break some of them into bigger chunks. I'll be using that to top the frosting. And the remaining I'm going to break into smaller pieces. I have a few bigger chunks of praline and the remaining praline I'm going to crush it. So using a rolling pin gently crush them. 
crushed praline is ready here. So keep this aside. Here is the cool down homemade caramel sauce. Uh, so this has turned really smooth. Since I've used uh, brown sugar, it has a really intense deep color. Let's start assembling the cake. So here is the well cooled down cake. I'm going to half the cake. I'm using a serrated knife or bread knife. So gently cut the cake into two equal halves. I'm going to place the top half of the cake onto a plate. So place a plate over it and gently flip it over. So here are the two halves of the cake. So next let's drizzle the simple sugar syrup that we have prepared over the cakes. So I'm using a pastry brush and gently drizzle the sugar syrup. So this will keep the cake very moist. Next, I'm going to spread one tablespoon caramel sauce over the cake. Spread it using a silicon spatula. Add generous amount of whipped cream frosting over this cake. I'm using an angled spatula or offset spatula so this will help to even out the frosting. So spread it well over the cake. Next I'm going to spread one tablespoon of crushed praline over the frosting. So spread it evenly. Place the other half of the cake over the frosting. Now the fun begins so let's start frosting the cake. So using the angled or offset spatula spread the frosting all over the cake. Cover the sides and top of the cake and coat it evenly. After covering the sides and the top of the cake with the frosting, we need to clean this up. Now this has a clean look so I'm not a pro when it comes to decorating cakes so I'm giving my best shot. Remaining whipped cream frosting I'm going to transfer that into a piping bag and I'll be using a star tip. So transfer everything into the piping bag. On the sides of the frosted cake, I'm going to stick the crushed praline. So going to stick it all over the sides of the cake. Here's our homemade caramel sauce. It has cooled down completely. So pour that into a Ziploc bag. After transferring the caramel sauce 
into the Ziploc bag. Snip the tip of the bag and we need to ensure we are only putting a small hole. Be creative and make any kind of patterns that you would like on the frosting. So here I'm adding some lines over the frosting. I have taken the whipped cream frosting in a piping bag and I have the star shaped uh, tip. So I'm piping some star shapes over the cake. So you can literally add any kind of patterns or shapes. Finally, I'm going to top the cake with uh, big chunks of praline I also piped some flower shapes at the bottom of the cake so here's our delicious and stunning butterscotch cake with whipped cream caramel frosting and praline it's very tempting to enjoy the cake right now however we need to keep the cake in the refrigerator and let it set well and cool down for at least uh, two hours so that's when the frosting and everything will set uh, well I have chilled the cake for two hours so now it's time to cut the cake so I'm going to cut into wedges so using a sharp knife cut into wedges and look at that gorgeous piece of butterscotch cake Here is our delicious and stunning butterscotch cake with whipped cream caramel frosting and praline topping. So I'm not a pro when it comes to decorating cakes but taste wise this cake tasted so delicious. So I'll be baking this cake again. So guys you have to try this one. This is perfect for holiday season and everybody is going to love it. So do give this recipe a try and let me know your feedback. So if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be back with more cooking videos. Until then, happy baking, take care and bye.